and along the route are many signs of the Mille Miglia. Viva Oscar, Viva the Drivers, and Viva Alfa Romeo, and sometimes still faintly visible, Viva Nuvolari. On up north race the small cars. Most are going well, but some are in trouble. Others look as if they'd been out in the holiday traffic between Rome and the sea. Near the top of the Radicofany Pass, crowds have been waiting since early morning for the first cars to arrive. And it's number six, Provasso's French Dina Panard. An ordinary saloon with a tiny 750cc engine. Third at Rome, with barely one minute between the first three cars in the 750 touring class. Closing up is the leader of the faster 750 sports class, Tuzon Persion in the DB. The Dina Panard seemed to be swamping all opposition, but here's 82, the baby Renault of Angelelli, taking the lead. Ravenna, and here's Giannina Mazzotto. The Ferrari has broken every record with... an average speed of well over 100 miles an hour for the first 180 miles. Peter Collins, Mike Keane and their Aston Martin are being refueled. Fast enough to be well in the picture. Fanjo with the first of the new Alphas, a little slower than Marzotto's Ferrari. Kling, a fraction faster than Fanjo. And it is an Alpha driven by Sanesi that is fastest to Ravenna, with a Ferrari driven by Farina in second place. Bracco, seven and a half minutes slower than Sinesi's Alpha, gives strong Ferrari support. Rossellini is going steadily, although Tom Cole is about to pass him. He's about 15 minutes behind the leaders. Although the Aston Martin is stationary, the experienced Parnell isn't wasting a second. The pace is telling. All round the circuit there are cars in trouble and many of the fastest cars are already out. Hawthorne, Johnson, Moss, Taruffi, Villarese and Wisdom, all have retired. At Pescara, some of the two-litre sports cars are now refueling. One of the new Maseratis, driven by Musso, is setting a terrific pace and already leads... its class by seven minutes. Now Cortesi looks a little less English on this Sunday morning. Six tails on, Aquila, and the Oscars lead in the 1100 sports car. There's 20 minutes between Venetian's leading Oscar and the Fiat Armini of Brandy. Alfa Romeo Saloon is the first of the two-litre touring class to arrive. There are 185 cars in this class alone. 185 moderate-sized saloon cars having a magnificent race amongst themselves. Stagnoli started at 2.30, long after anyone who has reached Rome so far. But there's no time to lose for Palmieri, who left at 3.22, is racing through the field and putting up the fastest time of the whole class. In the 1300 touring class, there are 120 of these little Fiat 1100 saloons. Another evenly matched struggle between ordinary saloon cars with a premium on driving skill. Here are the Mancinis, who led the whole way and won by just 15 seconds from Serena and Piccolo in a similar Fiat 1100. Cars with a top speed of little more than 80, which average over 65 for the whole thousand miles. The castle of Radicofany and the old customs houses between the Vatican States and Tuscany.
are left behind as the route goes on to Siena. 140 miles from Rome, Siena, with its 13th century cathedral where Richard Wagner composed, now echoes to a different sound. Police play a big part in running the race and wave the little cars on as they leave for the north. But now the unlimited sports, the fastest cars of all, are arriving at Pescara. All records fly as Giannino Mazzotto's Ferrari is checked in. And here's the first of the Alphas, just 31 seconds faster than the Ferrari. Another Alpha, Kling, even faster than Fanjo by 47 seconds. A Ferrari is five minutes faster still, Farina. Fastest British car, Peter Collins Aston. Fastest of all, Sanese's Alpha, nearly five minutes faster than Farina. A new record of 109 miles an hour from Brescia to Pescara. Another Ferrari, Tom Cole. He's going to refuel. Reg Parnell, all British hopes of a place now rest on the Aston Martins. The Tony Rhodes car, the last of the Jaguars, is out. The two litre sports cars have reached Aquila. And it is now a complete triumph for the new Maseratis, with Musso in first place. And not far behind is Mantovani. Giletti eventually won the class at an average of over 80 for the whole race. The two litres are now being caught up by the fastest cars. Sanesi is out, but Alpha still lead. Fanjo's in second place. Just behind is Kling, fastest of all by 50 seconds. Bracco is now fourth. And this is our Ferrari. With the Aston of George Abacas is just behind. Paul Freire's Chrysler leads the unlimited touring cars at Rome and its vast comfort spreads an air of leisure over the control. Yes, it is Ingrid Bergman waiting for Rossellini. Nearly 100 miles beyond Rome, the battle for the two-litre touring class is on. Stagnone's Alpha in second place. Faster than any comes Palmieri. And 20 minutes behind is Pagliari, the eventual winner. And here's Stanioli, being passed by a Fiat 1100. But the Alpha gets off again to finish second. The outstanding performance was put up by Palmieri, for he led the largest class by nearly half an hour, only to have the car put out by mechanical trouble on the very last stage. And on goes the race, with hundreds and hundreds of different cars of all sorts and sizes battling it out all over Italy. The smallest cars now reaching up from Siena to Florence. French cars are leading in both the sports and touring classes as they leave on the next 65 mile stretch to Bologna. Bologna with the oldest university in Europe and famed for its good living. The winner of the 750 touring class is here, a baby Renault. A Fiat makes an heroic effort to finish. No. No. And this is the last control before Brescia, and many cars have a final fill-up and check-over. The 
last 140 miles form one of the fastest sections of the whole circuit and lead back across the plains of Lombardy to Brescia where all are waiting for the first car to arrive. And way ahead of every other car, by nearly half an hour, comes a little French DB, Dina Panna. Persian and Tusa have driven for over 14 hours and average 66 miles an hour. Adina Panna's saloon is the first of the 750 touring cars to arrive, but Angelelli's Renault won the class. And he has the battered Fiat, not only finishing, but in sixth place. The crowds at Rome wait as the battle for outright victory draws closer. The Ferrari of Giannino Mazzotto has covered the first 500 miles at over 95 miles an hour. It's difficult for an early starter to know if he's going fast enough to hold the cars behind him. But Giannino knows that he will need everything to get the lead from the Alphas. Another Ferrari. It's Paolo Mazzotto. The Alphas still lead. Fangio has gained three minutes more over Giannino's Ferrari. And as Fangio pulls up to the Alpha pits to refuel, another Alpha arrives. Kling is fastest of all by 40 seconds. Alphas are first and second at Rome. Here's Fangio, but it is Kling who leads, trying for the second year running to disprove Biondetti's problem. He who leads at Rome can... Never win the Mille Miglia at Brescia. Somebody's been trying. It's Peter Collins. Another Ferrari. Bracco is fourth. Bracco is now heading towards the mountains where last year he took the lead to win. A new Lancia. Bonetto, fifth. Barnell, delayed by some straw bales, but that hasn't stopped him. He and Collins are now both in the first ten. And here's our Ferrari, still ahead of Rossellini's. Another Aston with George Avacassis is just two and a half minutes faster than Biodetti's Lancia. Rossellini has arrived. Rossellini retires at Rome, but we head north. All the way, the crowds line the road as we try to steady our camera against the bumps. And here's a lorry. And that's George Abacassis. It may take... luck to drive in the Mille Emilia, but that seems nothing to the pluck shown by many thousands of spectators. Biondetti says, it is necessary to have the courage to drive slowly. Here is Biondetti, but perhaps he doesn't include himself. We've been having a private race with this Nardi since early this morning, but it is the fight between the Alphas and the Ferraris for outright victory on which all attention is now focused. The Alfa Romeo Fanjo leads, Kling is out and Fanjo has taken his place. The fastest car still in the race has now nearly caught up with the Ferrari of Paolo Mazzotto, which left Brescia 19 minutes before the Alfa and is now less than two minutes ahead. 17 minutes have been lost, but his speed is high enough to make Paolo one of the best remaining Ferrari hopes of a win. For anything can happen to the leaders in this race, and there are nearly 300 miles yet to go. And here comes the leading Ferrari, Giannino Mazzotto, now in second place. His brother Paolo's Ferrari is just behind. 
Fangio's Alpha, still fastest of all. The Ferrari is climbing the Radicophony. Giannino Mazzotto knows the mountains of his own country better than Fangio. So here's a chance to make up part of those vital four minutes. The four minutes the Ferrari was behind the Alpha at Rome. Paolo Mazzotto is now up in third place with his Ferrari. The Alfa Romeo is here. Fangio using all his skill to make up his lack of intimate knowledge of the roads. Fangio's trying hard, but he won't know if he's going fast enough to hold his four-minute lead until he arrives at Siena Control. Bonetto is proving that the new Lancia is a fine car and it's up in fourth place. Another Ferrari is coming through the field. Tom Cole has passed Peter Collins. Something must have happened, for the Aston Martin was up in seventh place and has now lost some 20 minutes. A bad blow to British hopes. More at home in the mountains than any other driver, Biondetti, still holder of the record for the Futa crossing. And now let's get up to the next control point at Siena. The Ferraris of Giannino and Paolo Mazzotto have checked out before the Alfa arrives. And Fangio's lead has been cut from four minutes to less than two. There is less than two minutes between the Alfa and the Ferrari. <laughs> Bonetto is holding fourth place with Alancia. Parnell's Aston and Biondetti not far behind. And there's George Abbott. Yes, is Aston. One of the many standard Lancia Aurelia saloons is leaving Siena and moving on across the hills towards Florence. There's little chance to relax on this section, even if you've been up most of the night, for it is only too easy to go into one of these corners too fast. Now, on the other hand, if you get too cautious, you lose seconds and soon pile up into minutes. By now, the Ferrari is reaching Florence control. A wonderful drive, but has Giannino made up those two more minutes? No, the Alphas answer the challenge, gaining four seconds more lead and passing Paolo. Poor Musso. Bonetto leaves, still fourth. Peter Collins stands little chance now of making up that lost 20 minutes. Tough luck after a brilliant early drive. And here's a surprise. Reg Parnell. His Aston has come right up into sixth place, passing Tom Cole. But Tom gets away first. Beyond Florence is the Futa Pass over the Apennines, the last great obstacle before Bologna. And close behind the Lancia comes the Ferrari. The last chance for Giannino Mazzotta to use his knowledge of the mountains to gain those two vital minutes. 